I'm wearing a ColourPop Just a Tint lip crayon and it's making my lip burn. Is this plumping? Does this happen to anyone else? Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and what a video we have in store today. I believe I just uploaded like a collective haul for January 2021 with all the beauty and self-care kind of items I brought into my life last month and somehow seven palettes entered my life in January. My eyeshadow palette collection size is roughly around 30. That's including mini palettes as a whole item and like full 16 pan palettes as a full item. And I like to keep it around that size, especially considering half of my collection is mini palettes. But I decided that this year I want to cut it down even more. I think my happy, like my ultimate, look at everything in my collection and feel just pure joy kind of number is 20 maybe. So I perused through my palettes and I pulled out whatever for un some unnameable reason I haven't reached for in the past two months. And if that's the case, that palette has to go. <laughs> Even if I love it every single time I use it and the formula is outstanding and I was obsessed with it in the past, what for whatever reason, I'm not using it now. So um, that is like one criteria I use to pick which palettes I'm decluttering. And the other one is just kind of redundancy and whether I think I'm getting enough use out of it. So a lot of my picks today are gonna be quite surprising, but just because I'm including something to declutter now doesn't mean I love it any less than when I first got it. It just means that it's time and its purpose within my life is kind of reached its end. And I think that it can move on to something else. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, nine palettes that I'm gonna be decluttering. You can see them all here. I'll talk through them in a bit. And if you're interested in any of these, I will be posting these for like cheapity cheap cheap on my Mercari. The link will be in my description box. And I decided that whatever money comes from these palettes, I'm just going to donate to the Houston Food Bank. They can stretch a dollar so incredibly far to cover three meals. And I figured like, you know, I could sell these to kind of make back and supplement back what I've spent on palettes this past month, but I don't need it as much as many other people can need that money. So if you are interested in buying, definitely message me on Instagram and we can work out a payment outside of Mercari because that way I won't have to pay the fees and you will not have to pay tax either. So it will be cheaper for you. Instead of filming this as like a full eyeshadow palette collection video and then picking out what I'm decluttering, I'm just showing you what I'm decluttering because I already filmed like a whole entire eyeshadow palette collection video less than a month ago. So I'm not going to go through them all again, but I will link the video here if you want to see everything that I have. And also linked here and in my description box is my last video where I show all the new additional things that is going to be added on top of that. So let's get into the nine items that I picked that I just don't need in my life anymore. The first might be a surprise. I think this is probably the most surprising because I literally just got this. <laughs> this is the Alter Ego Canyon palette. It's a dupe for the Natasha Denona Bronze palette. I did a full swatch video of this. I think the formula of the Canyon palette in particular is really good. The metallics are much more buttery and creamy than the metallics in the Blooms palette, which also came out at the same time as this. But the reason I'm decluttering it is because it has so much overlap with the Artemis palette. I'll put a comparison picture here that's on my Instagram. And because this palette repeats a lot of the warm colors in my Alter Ego Artemis palette, and I don't wear warm tones that that much anymore, I think I might either pass this on to a friend I think would really enjoy it or post it on my Mercari. I, I feel a little weird about posting this on sale because I got it in PR, but if you do see me decide to put this on Mercari, it's because that money will provide food, <laughs> like for people, a basic human need. So yeah, you'll see what I decide in a, in a bit. Once you visit, visit my shop, you'll see if it's live. Next, I have my Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. Amazing palette, great formula, beautiful shades, has everything you need for a basic look. Again, a little more warm toned, not my, er, it's not like I never wear warm tones, I just have enough of it and I have it like five times over. So I don't need like a dedicated mini palette for it. Also, I have the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette, which honestly, I prefer that selection of colors so much more than the mini nude. So I just don't find myself reaching for this pretty much ever. I will almost always grab the mini glam over the mini nude just because of the colors, nothing to do with the formula. So this one is also hopefully leaving my collection. All of these are hopefully leaving my collection only if someone buys it. Next, 
I'm probably gonna post these together actually on um, in one listing, but I have the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions and a little bit of the black, okay, well, a lot of the black has chipped out, but how many times do we go through an entire black eyeshadow anyways? And then I also have the Huda Beauty Nude Rich Palette. It's been through a lot. Um, it's been dropped a lot by my cat or by me if I'm honest. So it is fully, almost fully missing one shade, which is my least favorite shimmer in the palette anyway. And a couple of the mattes, they're struggling. <laughs> so I'm gonna be posting these two together. I would say that I even prefer the formula of the old palettes, like the Smoky Obsessions, over the new Huda Beauty mini palettes because the metallics are more of that like rich, creamy texture as opposed to a little bit more of a special effect glittery texture. Both of them are lovely, like both of the formulas are lovely and have their purpose and their place and for like the version of shadow where they are, they both work pretty well. I do personally own the Light Obsessions palette, but I am keeping that one. I, I can, you cannot rip that from my hands quite yet. Next, I have this Pat McGrath uh, mini palette. This is in Sublime, which is the neutral version. I actually already gave Subliminal to my sister because she was asking if I had a plum eyeshadow for her to test out because she wanted to try some. And that one has a gorgeous plum. I think it's called Blue Blood, that shade. So um, anyways, this one I also, <laughs> wonderful formula. I just don't reach for it. And maybe it's the packaging, maybe it's just cause I usually have something like new and fun to test out. So this doesn't excite me even if the formula is um, exemplary. But these are the standard kind of shimmer formula from Pat McGrath. So probably not something that you don't already have if you have a lot of eyeshadows, like this kind of shimmer formula. But I actually did add like a heavy duty packaging Pat McGrath quad to my collection this year. And now that I have that, I just, I just don't wanna reach for this anymore. So this is also included in my picks. And for the same reason, I am going to be posting the Pat McGrath Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition Palette. Oh, every single time, every time I use this palette, I love the way my eyes look, but I just don't reach for it. <laughs> and I don't know if it's like this has an extra step to open, like, I don't know, or just because it's neutral, the same thing. I usually have a couple new things I'm testing out and really excited for, so I don't reach for old, small, neutral things like this. This comes with one matte, like a matte with some glitters, and then four smooth, creamy metallics. And again, I'm blown away every time I use this palette, but I'm just letting it go. It, it, it has lived its purpose in my life, and it can now live a purpose in someone else's life. It actually has some similar tones to like the Natasha Denona mini glam palette, which is this, but, or, you know, this size, but I prefer, or I'm more drawn to holding like a tiny little thing like this for a mini, like six pan, five pan palette, as opposed to something large like this. But um, it's because I usually don't need a mirror. This one has a really nice mirror in it. Next, I have two Juvia's Place palettes. These are the only two I own, and I just don't reach for these enough now. Still love them, still enjoy using them every time I do, but it's like once in a blue moon. Um, the Saharan is this gorgeous, half neutral, half edging into colorful palette. It's not truly that colorful, but oh I'm like, oh, look, just looking at this palette, I'm like, oh, that shade is so pretty, and I love this one. Okay, if it sells, it was meant to be. If it doesn't sell, it was meant to be. <laughs> and I also have the Saharan 2. This one actually is pretty beat up and pretty used, but this is the one that Angelica Nyquist says has the absolute best shimmer formula among all of Juvia's Place palettes, and I really trust her opinion on Juvia's Place. But again, these have just been sitting on my shelf for the past two months, so <laughs> unacceptable and, um, they shouldn't have to live like that. My camera battery just died, so we'll see how much it cut out of my long diatribe of why my uh, previous place palettes are included. Let me just talk about my last palette now, and that is a Viseart brow and eyeshadow palette. So this is intended for use, uh, like as the name suggests, for brows and eyes. This shade is not true pan. I broke it when I was testing how strong the glue was. I need to stop doing that because I keep on breaking eyeshadows. But anyways, so there are three like waxy formulas and then all of these nine powders and various shades of hair. And 
th this works really well, but since um, getting this and using the, I actually use this black to fill in my widow's peak right here, and also a combination of the brown and black to fill in my brows, I have gotten the Viseart Neutral Matte Eyeshadow Palette at the very end of December, and I've been really enjoying that. I can use the black in there to fill in my hairline if I want, so I just don't need this one anymore, so I'm posting it, um, because I don't need it. That's it. I'm looking down at these palettes and I feel like such an attachment to them because these have survived so many declutters and they were truly my favorites at one point in my life. But as I said, I keep on kind of rolling in new things and I can't, I can't do that and keep everything that I've ever owned ever, <laughs> even if I really like it. So in terms of like the connection to my soul, I'm ready to let go of these because I can imagine, you know, once these slowly leave my life that I will not really miss them because I know they exist and I've already had my kind of fun and experience with them and so now it's kind of at a point of their presence in my life is cluttering my mind. Again, check out the Mercari link in the description box if you want to essentially donate to the food bank but in return get a palette at a great deal and I that's it. <laughs> I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and for spending your time with me. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.